Welcome to M1 Technology, home of the premium upgrade snack controllers and easy DEX kits. The N1 controllers are the only controllers in the industry that allow use of the original factory 110 volt Coimac and 110 volt pulse validator. This provides a $500 plus savings for customers that need only DEX capability or MDB to install credit card or remote data systems. Many operators assume that an MDB coin mech and validator are needed in a machine to install a credit card system. This is not true when using in one upgrade kits. These same kits can also mix MDB and micro mech devices in the same machine. We're going to demonstrate how easy it is to install an in one board in an AP7000. Fully open the vending machine door and set door stop to hold door open. Then slide the peripheral panel out to gain access to the electronics and connections. Unplug the door switch cable, then remove cover encasing the vending machine controller by removing the four retaining screws. You will no longer need this cover. Remove display board by removing the three retaining screws. Save these screws. Remove the coin return mechanism assembly as follows. Remove the e-snap clip with needle nose pliers and lift push bar off axle and slip from push button shaft. And save the e-snap clip. Remove four screws retaining the coin return push button bracket and remove the bracket. Save these screws. Remove coin changer by disconnecting the coin changer then lifting it vertically and with horizontal motion towards yourself away from the keyhole mounting studs then set the changer aside. Remove the bill acceptor cassette and set aside. And then remove the four screws holding the bezel to the vending machine mounting bosses, two on the right and two on the left side of the validator respectively. And then set the bill acceptor aside and screws aside. The screws for the bill validator are specific for this purpose. Locate the two flat ribbon flex cables exiting the rear of the selection keypad. Remove the extension cables that are connected to them. Remove the 10 cap screws on the rear side of the selection panel. Slide the selection keypad bezel apart from the front of the drawer and carefully remove the red silver plastic display cover. Replace this with the retrofit display cover part number 050090-01 after its protective plastic cover is removed from both sides. You may install some black tape to the infrared window at the bottom if infrared readers are not used. Make sure the cover is oriented with the infrared window to the left when looking at the front of the machine or the door. Slide the selection keypad bezel flush to the drawer front and refasten at the rear with screws 3 to 10. When replacing screws 1 and 2 at the top, remove the furrow caps and save them. Confirm that the machine is unplugged from the wall. Remove the cover 
of the high voltage PCB, then locate the original cable plugged into P1 coming from the main harness. This is a three pin connector with number two pin keyed. Then connect the 1101-8821 extension to this cable with the male pins and the other end back into P1 of the small PCB. You can now replace a cover to this PCB. This will allow the cabling to reach the new N1 board. Reposition the green yellow ground wire. The new hole is to the right and above the current one. Assure that it is fastened, fastened securely. Before reinstalling the bill acceptor, confirm that the dip switch on the bill acceptor is set for short pulse. On this particular model, we want 7 on for short pulse and number 8 off. There are two flat ribbon male connectors coming directly from the selection keypad. These connectors are attached to the new control board using two extension cables. 11 1702 and 1703. You want to connect these to the ribbon cables so that the contact windows of both connector housings face the same direction. If you notice when you flip them over they are plain on the opposite side of the connector housings. Connect 11 1702 to the bottom keypad connector and O3 to the top keypad connector. Tape can be used to reinforce these connections. Mount the retrofit display assembly. Remove the protective cover on the display before installing. Locate the top two studs used to mount the keypad panel. Attach the display assembly at its two upper holes using the flat washer supplied in the kit and the furls that were saved previously. Place the flat washers and furls over the two studs and screw the assembly in. When done, confirm that the display matches up with the window in the display lens already installed and also confirm that the display connector is at the top. Remove the existing control board by squeezing the mounting pegs so the board is free to slide off. Find the standoff reference sheet in your instructions. Use this sheet to install the standoffs for the AP67000 kit. After installing the plastic standoffs for the cover, the new board can now be installed. Slide the new control board onto the four right pegs and secure. There is an 11 pin connector coming out of the black sleeve from the Mars only 12 pin connector. Connect the male end of the 1101-8721 cable into the 11 pin connector. Plug the female end into J12 on the N1 board. Plug the 6-pin connector from the bill validator into J14 of the N1 board. Connect the display to J2 of the N1 board using the retrofit display cable assembly. Confirm that the black wire goes to pin 1.
Please note that a pin is removed on the display so the cable can only be installed one way. The power will be connecting using the original connector. In order for this cable and the motor cable to reach, you will have to undo the cable harness that, that guides these cables. This harness is located near the back of the pull-out door. Once rerouted, everything should reach. This will allow the power and motor connections to plug into the board. The power connection will be a 5-pin connector with number 4-pin key. This will plug into J19 of the new board. The motor connector will be an 18-pin connector with pin 11 keyed. This will plug directly into J17 of the new control board. There is a door interlock switch located on the front of the pull-out door. Its connector is a two-pin connector. This will plug into the new control board at J8. Connect the keypad extension cables to the control board. Connect 11-1700-02 to control board connector J13. Connect 11-1700-03 to the control board connector J10. If you were going to install an MDB coin mech and bill validator, you would use a typical MDB 2x3 harness coming from the validator to plug into the mech and the controller. This will plug directly to the 11-1700-06 MDB cable assembly included in the kit. The other end of this extension will plug into J4 on the board. You may now reinstall the coin return linkage, coin slot mechanism, bill cassette, and coin mech. After all the connections on the board are made, plug in the DEX cable coming from the board DEX cover into J5. Then carefully line up the front cover with the standoffs that are on the board. And install the screws. If you prefer to have a panel mounted DEX port in a different part of the machine, we have a DEX 17 cable, which is a two foot cable with a panel mount connection. Simply drill a hole near the controller to mount the DEX port. Also, as a precautionary measure to eliminate the possibility of electrical shock, we added tape to the connection coming from the high voltage PCB. You may now power up the machine. Confirm that you get a beep from the controller and the bill acceptor cycles as well as, well as a live legible display. It is important now to configure the motors. This process tells the controller what motors it's going to be responsible for in this particular machine. To configure the motors, press the yellow service mode button once. If sys errors appear, press the 13, which is your down arrow, and any errors with the exception of motor errors can be cleared by pressing the 14 which is your execute button. If motor errors appear, hit the 12, which is your cancel button to go back to the main menu. Then press the 13 to go to configure and then press 14 to go to the configure menu. 
Press 13 until Configure Motors appears and then press 14. This dis display should show you a total motor count for this machine. You may now press the 12 to go back to the main menu. Press 11 until you get to Options. And press 14. Once in the Options menu, use 13 to go to Bill Val. Use 14 to change to Pulse. Then 13 down to Coin Level Memory and hit 14 to turn it on. This allows the controller to remember the coin level in the mech if power is lost. You may now price the machine. Press the yellow service mode button. Press 13 until you get to price. Hit 14 to go into the price menu. This menu has dual pricing capability to show cash and credit card pricing in the display. To show cash prices only, hit 13 until you get to Entire Machine DP. Press 14 and enter 99.95 and press 14 to save. Now hit the 11 to go up to the cash pricing menu. You can price individual selections in the single product menu or you can price a whole tray by using entire row or you can price the whole machine by going to entire machine. Press 14 to enter the price and and 14 again to save. You can now press the door interlock button to go back to insert money. You, know, you may now test the machine with cash using the coin mech and the bill acceptor. When you first power up an N1 board you might see this message where it says use exact chains. That simply means that the controller knows there's not enough change if you were try, going to try to use a, um, a dollar bill to make a VIN. So what you do now is hit the yellow service mode button and then go down to um, fill dispense mode and then hit 14 to go into the fill dispense mode and then add coin. You can see it incrementing on the right hand side of the display. And this should satisfy the needs of the controller. We should now be able to do a dollar VIN. Uh, something else to add, if you want your machine to be able to take multiple bills or larger bills, you can go back to fill dispense mode and um, put in a, a considerable amount of coin and that will allow the uh, machine to take larger bills. Your AP7600 is now ready for many years of dependable use. Feel free to call in one if you need any assistance. 
We have experienced personnel always ready to help. Our phone number is available on the cover of every N1 board. In addition to the AP 6 and 7000 machine, we can also upgrade the AP 4 and 5000 and the AP 110 series. We can also upgrade all of the LCM models plus the National 145, 146, 147, and 148 machines. In addition, we now have USI 3000 series and USI 3100 series controllers. Contact N1 Technology for more information.